So I'm here today to talk about organizational culture. It's a set of beliefs and values, assumptions, norms, even ceremonial activities that a company will do or an organization will do to help guide the employee's behavior and performances. I'm going to go ahead and discuss how the art of war can be related to the organizational culture. So we have moral law, and that's going to give you a complete set of rules to keep the soldiers, the troops, and everybody in harmony with the leader, as opposed to keeping your boss happy and following their rules. Then we have heaven, which talks about the day and the night. Well, that's really keeping knowing your environment, especially the people that you interact with. We have earth, which composes of the physical structure, the grounds, is there a hill, is there a flat ground to take your troops through, and so on and so forth. That's really associated with the risk factor in your personal decisions you make for the company. Then we have the commander. Is he virtuous? He has wisdom, sincerity. He always puts the troops first. Well, that's kind of like saying you have to know your manager. What is that manager's manager's style? Once you know the manager's style, you know the manager, and you know how to pursue the activities that you want to get done or accomplish the task at hand. Then we have the method and disciplines. Well, that's just army life. That's talking about the rank, the structure. Do we have what is needed to achieve the mission? Do we need another SUV or a Hummer? Do we have enough ground troops? Do we have food to feed those troops? Well, just like a company, we have to make sure we have the proper staff. The staff knows their chain of command. So higher management, middle management, lower management, assembly line, they have to know how to interact with each other based on their chain of command. You have to make sure, do we have enough materials to produce this product that we have guaranteed? So we can take organizational culture and relate it to the art of war and our cultures. Let's go ahead and talk about something I actually know about. Let's talk about the Army versus pro wrestling. And as you see from the photos, I know a little something, something about that one. So we're going to look at the art of war, and we're going to compare it to the Army and the pro wrestling. So where we had the moral law, well, now with the Army, we have rules, structure, and you need to have these rules and structure for success. But with pro wrestling, you know who's signing your paycheck and do whatever they ask for. There's not many rules and structure. It's what does the promoter want? Get the job done. Now we have the heavens. Well, once again, that's talking about what is your rank and the environment that you're going to be working in. So your rank will determine whether or not what you can and cannot do. And what if your specialty is will determine what you can and cannot do. Where of pro wrestling, it's kind of like if you're popular, then you're going to make a great living with it. Because the more popular you have by the fans, that's more money you have put into the promoter's pocket. That's all you really need to worry about. So as you can see, with armies, a lot of team building and uh, coercion, you have pro wrestling, which you're really independent. That's why you're considered an independent contractor. You're independent on your own to make sure you get the job done. Let's talk about our earth now. So, now that's going to, once again, you're going to determine what is your personal risk factors that you have and that, what is my rank? What is the flexibility I have due to my rank? If you are a regular, let's say, uh, E1, it's pretty much, you pretty much got, just got into the military. You don't have much choice in anything you do. But where, if you're a commander, you have a lot of say in what your troops going to do and how you're going to assess things and, and how to get the job done. So your risk factor is a lot higher because now you're responsible for all those troops. Where in pro wrestling, it's what type of creative ideas are there. The innovation is going to determine your risk factor. If the story writers don't like you, you're not going to have much of a story to go by. and Your risk factor is high because you're not keeping a job. Let's talk about methods and discipline now. What's the chain of command? When you're dealing with this with the military, you're deciding for all of your troops. There's no friendly favors with the military. But with pro wrestling, if you have the friends in the right parts, you're going to have great storylines, you're going to have the fans' interest, you know, you have to have good, good guy versus bad guy. So you're really talking about what makes or breaks you with pro wrestling. With the Army, where do you, where do you stand in your chain of command and making sure you get your job done right? Okay, now let's talk about Google, which is a whole world of its own. With Google, believe it or not, Google does have a lot of structure. People always see all these, these commercials and advertisements how, oh, Google has the pool table, they have the volleyball court, they have the cooks. Well, what people don't realize is Google bases a lot of their hiring practice on science. 
They have a very, very strict structure in which they do things within. Granted, you are allowed to think outside the box. You can be so far outside that box, nobody even sees you. That's how far outside the box you can think and get your job done. But you do have to remember that during the hiring process and throughout the structure of Google, there are rules and regulations just like any other culture. So the hiring process is done by a team. Google really works as a team, where they're not an independent person like pro wrestling. Kind of a team like the military, but not all those strict rules. They take care of their people. They believe that even though they have middle management and upper management, everybody talks. They don't label people. It's an open door policy. They talk very freely and can express and can get in very heated arguments. Google also has certain incentive packages where people can earn stock and shares, which gives them a, a great self-worth for the company and makes it promote. And if you fail on something, that is totally fine. That just lets Google know where they have to improve what they do. All right, so what are we saying here? Google does have a really, really tough hiring practice with many people involved, but they're never independent. So here I gave you a couple of different types of organizational cultures. Now ask yourself, what is your organizational culture at home? Even your own household has their organizational culture. They can be pertained to any part of your life. Thank you.